All right, everyone, I guess we should uh, get started. Welcome to the August Vendor Spotlight Keycast, where BVYP will be presenting utilizing Teams with traditional voice services, right? Um, just on a high level, like George is the uh, CEO, founder of BVYP, and we'll be presenting. Uh, Justin's coming as a guest speaker to talk about how to sell Teams to your customers and these services, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be covering everything from obviously selling to planning and building and how it all works. That's right. Um, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom, right next to the, to the participants button. I think you have that, um, or by the raise hand area. If you have chat, you want to talk to people, make sure you're setting the chat to everyone, because by default, when you open that up, it will only send to panelists. Um, I think that's it for housekeeping. So George, go ahead. We are we already have our first Q&A. Why is Mendy better than Kyle? <laughs> well, I'm sure that's a, a, a webcast all for itself. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Yeah, and all good. All right, so let's um, just get, get started here. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, welcome. So appreciate uh, MSP Geek and, and allowing us to jump on a GeekCast for this month. Our topic today is Microsoft Teams. You'll love my <clears throat> very rudimentary dra paint drawings here, but we're gonna try and do something that covers everyone. So we're just gonna talk about the plumbing of Teams Voice first, and then we'll go into where it works and where it doesn't. So in every region, Microsoft offers some version of Teams Voice where they select a carrier in each region, bring it to the table, API it to their portal, plug it into the back of Azure, and then you have access to <clears throat> Teams devices with the embedded Android app, which I know you're all familiar with from Poly and Audio Codes and Yealink and so on. And then obviously you have the Teams apps, right? Windows, Mac, Android, iOS. I'm sure everyone at some point has looked into what the calling plans are in their area. The pricing is region specific, right? So in sub 300 user organizations here in the US, it's like $20 per user per month. Obviously in the UK, I think it's 12 pounds per user per month. In Canada, everybody has their own kind of price point for below 300 users and above 300 users. And the catch is you need a calling plan for every single user, basically. Um, there are some, you know, offshoot scenarios, but generally speaking, every user doesn't just have a 365 license, they have a 365 calling plan. And of course, that's, that doesn't scale after a certain point, right, from a costing standpoint. So we're going to talk about teams off the shelf, which is this is how it looks like. And then we're going to also talk about direct routing. And I'm sure everybody's heard about direct routing or heard of direct routing. Uh, and basically what this is, is the ability for you to take a third party solution, whether it be a dial tone provider or some sort of contact center solution or some sort of integration platform, kind of bolt it into the back of, of Azure so that you can pass traffic back and forth from a voice standpoint. Now, this is a very, this, I took this right from Microsoft's website. I kind of did a little bit more of a basic view, right? <laughs> dial tone provider. SBC or phone system acting as an SBC, Azure. So I took a lot of moving parts and I just blocked them. But in a nutshell, this is how it works to you, right? So in this, you know, I know we've already had some jokes about, so why would I use Teams as a phone system if Microsoft's down? Well, listen, Microsoft does go down. I mean, let's not hide from that fact. You know, so obviously in, let's call it option one, if Microsoft goes down, then you're on the hook, right? You wait for Microsoft. There is something called a survivable branch appliance, but that doesn't necessarily solve the problem if Microsoft's not routing calls from the outside world to your user. Keeps calls happening in inner, inner location, but it doesn't necessarily help you if Microsoft's not passing traffic. So from a survivability standpoint, if you selected your own dial tone provider and bolted it into the back of Teams, then at the very worst case scenario, you could literally call forward, right? You could go in, call, 
this number goes to this number, right? Until Microsoft's back. And you can probably automate that with most dial tone vendors, right? If the connection drops between the endpoint that the traffic's going to, it recognizes that and it can flip and call forward, right? So a little bit of redundancy. I call that the donut spare, right? Where you basically, you know, you get enough to get to the to the mechanic and get a real tire back on kind of thing. And then this is what they call hybrid deployment, right? Where instead of just bolting on dial tone, you actually take a third party solution, pick whichever you want. You marry that with teams so that a user on this phone system and a user in teams are married. And then you choose wherever you want to pick up that call. Doesn't matter. If you want to pick it up on the non Teams apps and phones, fine. You want to pick it up on the Teams apps and phones, fine. And you can enter extension dial and you can move calls in between both areas. Now, if Microsoft goes down, so on phone system should hopefully still be running, calls should still be trafficking, and you could flip over to an alternative method until Microsoft's back if, if in the event they're actually having an issue. So I kind of just want to set the table, right? Option A, B, and C, right? One more time. Option A is Microsoft direct off the shelf calls, call plans. Option B is direct routing, you bring your own dial tone vendor. And option C is a hybrid deployment where you take a, another UCAS solution and you bolt it together with Teams and you have a, what they call a hybrid deployment. So that sets the foundation for the rest of the call. I just want to put that out there up front so that the rest of the tech talk really just kind of falls into place. We already have a couple of questions and we already have a couple of chats. So um, Calvin says, regarding teams and mobile services, what is your opinion about mobile VoIP integration? I feel like we're taking steps back where our current phones can connect to the same PBX at some MVNO in Europe. Yeah, mobile network operator, right? Where the mobile number is actually part of the PBX. Yep, seen it. With teams, I feel like we're going back to a dialing app instead of native support. How do you see things working with the future of a VoIP provider? It is a very good question. Um, I've seen the implementation you're talking about, right? Where effectively you're getting a SIM card that you, you swap out your regular, you know, provider, you pop in the SIM card. That's, you know, going on like a backhaul network, right? Like a wholesale provider that's, you know, buying traffic from the big boys, right? Here in the United States, it'd be like a Verizon or at and In the UK, it'd be like a BT, so on and so forth. But what's happening is that the plumbing behind the scenes, I'm just explaining it, Calvin, for everyone else. The, the plumbing behind the scenes of that SIM card automatically registers that device to the back end telephony platform so that you don't need an app in order to make and receive calls. It's like a, you're just using your, your native mobile experience, right? But for Teams, you're right. This doesn't exist right now. Microsoft doesn't really give that option. It's like, the app on top of the phone running on data rather than over the 4G, 3G, 5G network. Will it get there? Yeah, I think it will. Um, I don't know if you know, but Microsoft acquired a company um, specifically for their 5G you know, technology, not specifically for Teams per se, but they did come with an entire PBX platform kind of behind the scenes. And I believe when that integration of that technology is adopted, this type of stuff will actually be possible. There's no timeline. They're not talking about it. But if you actually look at the company they purchased back last year, they have that technology kind of in their platform already. So the question is, how did they take two different code sets and make them work happily, right? Um, so do I see that in the future, Calvin? Absolutely, I do. Um, but I think what they're going to have to do is deploy it with partners, kind of like what they're doing with Operator Connect. So for everybody that doesn't know what Operator Connect is, Microsoft opened it up this year at Inspire, where you can use um, approved third-party dial tone vendors in each region instead of the Microsoft calling plans. Basically, it's just a, a faster setup process to direct routing, right? But you click on the logo of your carrier, and then basically you can kind of tie your account in without having to port numbers. So uh, will Calvin be the head of Microsoft one day? Well, let's see how long Satya stays. I think he'll be around for a while, but he could. Um, but so I think what they'll do, Calvin, is they'll probably use approved providers when that technology is rolled out um, to do stuff like that. I don't think they're going to kind of leave it open. So that's my best guess when it comes to teams in like the next two, three, four years uh, and that specifically. But uh, until then, yeah, you're talking about the mobile app, 
for Android and iOS. It's not super survivable, I'll admit, right? So if you're driving down the highway, it'll work all right. But if you have a pretty hard drop in between towers, you'll probably, you'll probably lose the call. And then Calvin also says, how much VoIP downtime have you seen as a provider in the last 12 months? And how do you personally feel about the unavoidable downtime? Uh, so how much teams VoIP downtime? Actually, I'm tracking this, Calvin. <clears throat> There's been seven instances where Microsoft Teams voice has been affected actually in the last six months. So it's like 1.2, 1 1.1 times per month, I guess, uh, or something like that. But um, one shape or another, they have had a problem. Um, I think they're definitely having a problem with scalability, right? So many people are using it so quickly. I think they just didn't think about scale. I know for a fact they have run out of data center resources in certain regions faster than they thought, and then they had to rush to add more capacity. So the best way to handle that the potential outages is you know, to, to build in that redundancy plan up front, right? And Microsoft isn't going to give it to you off the, out of the box. Um, just like they tell you, hey, you should be using a third-party backup solution. We only back up your stuff for 30 days, and that's not really backup. Um, you almost need to plan ahead uh, if you're really serious about using it as your default, your default solution. But it is definitely unavoidable. I hope that it stabilizes more as time goes on, but you can definitely plan ahead by talking about maybe the non-native Microsoft solutions uh, that bolt in via direct routing gives you a little bit more security because you have control outside of, you know, just the regular Microsoft umbrella. Um, I'm just gonna keep on answering questions because they're, they're good questions. Is there no real way to use Teams client to just do basic SIP into your existing PBX? Not without direct routing, right? So what you see on the screen is this hybrid deployment. I haven't flipped, switched off this slide yet. But that's what that is, right? Like you can't, it's not a native SIP client. Actually, Teams is not using normal VoIP codecs at all, right? G711, G722, G729. These are the codecs that phone systems have been running for forever. Uh, actually, Teams is using a proprietary codec and part of that codec came over from Skype. So even though we've eliminated the word Skype for business, that technology is still the foundation to how Teams actually processes traffic. So at the end of the day, no, you can't use it as just a generic SIP client. Uh, it's not designed to do that. Um, that's why Microsoft, you know, coming back to, I'm um, going to go back here. That's why Microsoft asks you to use third-party SBCs. Some are approved, some are not. Uh, but basically to take your native SIP traffic, convert it, and pass it to a PSTN endpoint or a Microsoft data center near you, to have that convert onto the team's voice side using their technology after, after you pass that gateway. So that's the answer to that. And another question was, does MS have, Microsoft have issues with voice availability related to E911? What are the implica implica implications of Teams calling? Well, you make a very good point. Um, if, if Teams is not working and you can't use it as a voice solution, um, and that's how you're able to actually dial 911 and you can't, that's a problem. Um, so ultimately, you know, there's a lot of labeling that you can do um, to explain what's going on. I'm sure Microsoft in their terms of service, which is very long. And if you go through it, you'll find out that they say, don't use this as your primary source of 911. Sure, it says that. I, I don't know that specifically, but I'm sure it does. Um, but it's a, yeah, it's definitely a concern, especially with some of the, I know not everybody's up with the US facing laws. I know that this isn't the case worldwide, but if you're using this as your primary phone system, that could be potentially problematic unless you talk about survivability, branch gateways that allow you to connect the third party phone line to that location for outbound 911 dialing. If Teams goes down from a cloud connection, that's the kind of stuff you're gonna have to talk about um, in, that, in that scenario. Hey, George, on that <clears throat> real quick, if you were to bring your own SIP provider, would Microsoft still be responsible for E911? So Microsoft has a dynamic solution so that they can identify where you are geographically, and that can be piggybacked with a third-party provider potentially. But no, once you introduce your own carrier, the carrier of record who 
is responsible for the actual phone numbers would be where you would do your E911 registration. Right. So while Microsoft can assist in the identification of where you are, they would totally be off the hook once you bring your own provider, which is a question you should ask, right? There are a lot of low cost SIP providers, VoIP providers out there from a trunking standpoint that um, they don't do it because they're in countries that don't demand it, but then they sell everywhere kind of thing. Um, you got to ask that question kind of upfront and make sure that you have your, your you know, eyes dotted and, and teams crossed kind of thing. So anyway, wow. A lot of questions up front. That was <laughs> I'll, good. I'll, I'll keep on answering those uh, as they come in, uh, but back to, back to these. So uh, fast forwarding, right? Direct routing, right? So let me just back out of here and, and show you a couple of script examples. And actually, let me see if Microsoft will let me log in. Ah, so I'm just going to show you a few pages to match up with the scripts I'm about to show you as examples. Maybe I can type my password right. Sorry about that. I tried to log in before the session, but as we said, they were kind of offline and still kind of kind of, kind of not online. <laughs> so we'll wait for that to spin. But when you're talking about direct routing, you can, uh, wait, here we go. So let me go to Teams Admin. And I just want to line up what I'm showing you for the people that are more UI people rather than script people. Um, we'll just wait for that to load. So there's two steps when you want to activate Microsoft Teams for direct routing, okay? Step number one is the SBC activation, right? Basically telling Microsoft Teams that you're allowing traffic from a specific location. And there's some other work that gets done on the SBC side. I'm not gonna do that because there's a lot of options there. You just gotta assume that you have a good one that's supposed to work. But basically in some of these scripting examples, what we're trying to do is tell Teams to set up a gateway to allow your SBC to attach to your account set up a usage plan so that you can track reporting, which isn't great right now, but it's kind of like a collector. Set up your voice routing policy so that you can tell what user goes to what plan and goes to what gateway. And then set up your voice route, right? Because you may have different routes depending on where you are geographically, what country, what region. If you have multiple providers, if it's one provider, then it's very simple. And then lastly, setting up your dial plan which allows teams to determine how you're, when you dial certain ways, how's it supposed to transform that dialing to make that call go where it's supposed to go. So while I'm still waiting for Microsoft to load behind me, um, this is basically what happens during the initial handshake after you authenticate using the script, it's going one by one by one by one and literally entering these for you. And um, if it ever comes up, I'll show you where that happens in the UI. The, now, the thing is, is like for anyone with even a passing familiarity of setting up a phone system, right? These are kind of the steps you're going to take on a standard PBX, right? You're going to be creating your connection to the outside world. You're going to be setting up your call restrictions, your call planes, how the users dial out, things like that. These are the same steps that you're doing assigned to the users. You're just doing it in teams. That's exactly right. So we're setting up the highway that all the calls traffic in and out from a direct routing standpoint, or via an SBC, not a native Microsoft or included Microsoft calling plan, right? And then once that's done at the account level, a couple of things that you have to do ahead of time. One, you usually have to add a custom domain name to your team's account. You don't have to go and do all the A records and stuff like that. That's usually done ahead of time behind the scenes, but we call it a reverse FQDN where basically you, you know, it automatically approve once you get added as a domain, a unique domain to SBC domain to your team's tenant. And then that's important for the next part, which is activating users, okay? When you activate users, you wanna be able to marry, well, first you, you, you know, there's a couple of things that get turned on. You wanna turn on international calls. You wanna turn on your dial plan attached to the user. Do you wanna turn on the Microsoft voice license that we'll talk about that in a little bit, which does the voicemail, the visual voicemail, the voicemail to email, the transcription, um, like that all comes as one piece, right? You can either turn that all on 
or you say, no, I don't want any of that on. I just want to make it make and receive calls. No, no voicemail kind of thing. So you can see here, you enable enterprise voice, you enable, you know, if you want international calls, you can enable international calls, you add your dial plan, you add your route. And basically you go through and then you start saying, hey, um, here is the custom number that I want to associate with the user in Teams Voice. Now, if you were to buy a calling plan from Teams Voice, and it's slowly coming up behind me, if you were to buy a calling plan from Teams Voice, every user would have their own full phone number. But actually with direct routing, you do not have to do that. You can marry up an extension number, a short code, or a full phone number with the user. It's up to you. <clears throat> when you send the calls into Teams, they first identify your tenancy by the FQDN attached to your account. And then they look for the users on the account to match up with what short code extension number or full number is attached to the user. And that's how they deliver calls. So if you don't want to buy a bunch of phone numbers, depending on where you are, that could be inexpensive, maybe they're included, whatever. But if you don't want to pay extra to have everybody have their own phone number, you don't necessarily have to. You could literally have one main number and everybody can just actually piggyback off of a short code or extension number. So that's something you can do cool with direct routing. That's a cost saver that's different with the calling plans with Teams Voice. But effectively you see, you know, I'm activating all my users, I'm attaching their extension number to their, you know, their account. And you just literally go down the line till all your users are activated. And then basically you sit and wait. Um, you can wait sometimes up to, I'm gonna try and refresh again, a day for Microsoft to process all of your changes and recognize all of your license assignments and activate Teams Voice. So when you're talking about the dial pad in Teams, um, that's how you know when your Teams Voice account is actually activated and allowed to start dialing. That's when you know everything is working. That from, from the time that you do all of this to the time that it processes, you could be talking about 24 hours usually sooner, hopefully not longer, but expect 24 hours. So um, that's this dial pad, right? So I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but finally the new team's calling layout has changed. This was announced like a year ago. And then like they kept on delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. Now it should be in pretty much general release. So <clears throat> you see the dial pad, you see whatever your extension number, short code and Dedicated phone number, if whatever is assigned to your account is attached to your dial pad, obviously you have your call history and you have your speed dials and groups on the right. Um, obviously, you know, for anyone that's actually worked with Teams Voice, you know that you can go and actually activate your call settings and configure your Teams voicemail if you choose to use the Teams voicemail. Uh, you can actually type your greeting or you can record your greeting. If you type your greeting, there's a text-to-speech uh, engine that runs in the background when somebody hits your voicemail. Of course, if a voicemail is left, um, then you will see that uh, in your visual voicemail, right? So if I go to my voicemail tab, you can see it's transcribed to the best of their ability. You also get a voicemail and an email with that if you turn on the team's voice option, which is if you go back to my little script example, you'll notice that that's what this line is right here you're basically activating visual voicemail, speech, you know, speech to text, transcription, and all that jazz. Now, it's worth mentioning a couple of things. I'll go to my recent, oh, is it finally going to show up? I don't know. Oh, it's just running slow today. All right, so a couple of things. Um, coming up soon, we already have uh, transcription of voicemails. That's been around for quite some time. Soon you will have transcription of call recordings, okay? So that is a feature that Microsoft didn't even tell anyone, wasn't in the roadmap. They literally just put it out there out of nowhere. Here it is. And so this is supposed to be coming, um, I think next month. They published it just August 20th. So that's a cool little aha, aha moment, right? Because they keep on trying to add some cool stuff. Some other recent news, they now, that whole spam likely, spam, you know, spam call telemarketer, right? That little label that shows up <clears throat> on everybody's cell phones. Well, Microsoft just turned it on for everybody who receives calls in Teams. 
whether it's direct routing or native. But if you hate that and you'd rather see the name, um, you can disable it. So just a heads up, uh, it's just a simple, simple PowerShell command. Um, some other cool things, breakout rooms for Teams meetings. So this is a cool new feature they just launched as they're trying to get kind of more Zoom-like. We're using Zoom right now. Um, and a, a couple other things that I thought were cool um, that kind of was recent news. So this is the ability for you to use Cortana to add people to calls and control your team's rooms, which is kind of interesting. And then also they're going to be activating push to talk on both Android and iPhone by default uh, coming up in the next kind of major release. And then lastly, um, Microsoft announced RMT, RTMP support. So you can actually stream from Teams like Zoom and other platforms to third-party streaming services that can then dish out to Facebook, LinkedIn, all that good stuff. And then lastly, uh, you can now save Teams meetings recordings to OneDrive and SharePoint. And you can drive Teams meetings automatically to record at the organizational level as well. And you can also set those recording files to expire and delete on their own. So some recent news that I've been tracking, just figured I mentioned that. Oh, coolest part of the new news. So we heard Microsoft's raising their prices in 2022, right? Everybody heard that? No surprise, I hope. So you know that the prices are going up roughly 20% for E1, E3, E5, business basic, business premium, E3. Well, guess what? As part of that pricing increase, they're now giving everybody audio conferencing built in. So what is audio conferencing? That's when you set a team meeting, you, you, set, you schedule a team's meeting, and in the meeting, it lets people dial a number local to their area to bridge into the, into the meeting rather than joining via the app. So when in 2022, and here's the link, if you don't want to you know, straight to Microsoft. In 2022, when this pricing goes up, the $4 per month per user plan now, which is called audio conferencing, is now avail is now going to just be included in basic premium E1, E3, E5. So for whatever it's worth, you're going to have it. If you don't use it, you don't use it, but you got it. You're paying for it. Now, the cool part is you can... And this is the trick. This is you know, an important part, by the way. You can have a audio conferencing user enabled and direct routing working on the same user without conflict. So you can use the Microsoft dial-in service for meetings, separate of a Teams calling plan, separate of direct routing, okay? But you can enable direct routing and audio conferencing for Microsoft simultaneously without conflict. But what you can't do is have a user with a calling plan from Microsoft and direct routing enabled at the same time. You either have a Microsoft calling plan or you don't, but you can't have both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But with audio conferencing, you can. So I guess that's good news since everybody's about to get it next year. Surprise. So there's that. Um, some questions. I'm going to kind of stop for a second and answer some questions that may have come up in the chat. So they said, yeah, Will asks if there's any sort of API or webhook options to trigger an event based on a call. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So Microsoft's trying to marry the Microsoft communication service, which is basically a Twilio type uh, competitor, if you would, with actually the Microsoft Teams voice solution. They are completely separated right now. So the Azure communication service, which does API-based calling, SMS, blah, 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 and Teams voice don't intersect at the moment. They plan to intersect them, and that's when you'll get those type of hooks. You can get them with direct routing because that call would pass through the third party before it would get to the actual Teams voice network, and you could pick up that hook there in transit. But you would not get it from the Microsoft side right now. That's the answer to that question. Uh, the next question we have is whether, like the, regarding the, I think the audio conferencing license, is that yeah. that's included even in the business standard plans you're saying? Yeah. Starting 2022. When, when the, the prices price, go up. Prices go up. Yeah. Standard, premium, E1, E3, and E5 will have this turned on automatically. 
you won't have to go and actually pay additional licensing. You won't have to pay for it separately. Like right now, if I just wanted one user to have audio conferencing, I could just go get the $4 SKU, pop it on, and I'm good for that one person. Right. Next year, it's going to be on for everyone. And I assume you would want to stop paying the extra $4. license. <laughs> but not. we're giving it back for the other tail license. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so you mentioned like you could have direct routing and audio conferencing enabled at the same time. Like how does... Are, are we able to bring our own audio conferencing bridge and use that with a Teams meeting? Or is the audio conferencing license require us to use Microsoft's style tone, so to speak? Yes. Audio conferencing uh, from Microsoft includes Microsoft style tone. So for example, here in the US, Microsoft's the carrier for all of Teams voice in North America is bandwidth.com. Right. So they bring them in as their vendor. You don't have a choice. You turn on audio conferencing, they do it all. It's all automated and it's all unlimited, but you don't ultimately have a choice on that side. Now you could choose to use a conferencing bridge through direct routing. If like, let's say you're using, instead but of- Does just, the audio come across from the Teams meeting onto the conferencing bridge? Like if, so, if someone it, joins on computer audio and then another person joins on conference yeah. bridge by phone, in, does in, it- In hybrid deployment, it's possible. In a hybrid deployment via direct routing, it is possible, uh, but not usually not just on a, you know, if you're just piping in a dial tone vendor, that's it to be dial tone to teams with nothing else. Right. You're not going to be able to do that. But if you have another solution hybrided with teams, you could piggyback off of that solutions conference bridge into a team's meeting and actually use that portion of the audio because uh, it'll actually work as an active call. Cool. So it is possible. But it all depends if what's in front of Teams, right? Um, Travis asks, are you aware of any solution that provides SMS integration for Teams voice users that actually works in a way yeah. users understand? <clears throat> how the, how, yes. How that works is it's an app, right? You add an app into the, the wrapper, right? The Teams wrapper. And then effectively, it works as conversational messaging. It doesn't work into a channel yet right? Like you, if you created a Teams channel, you could receive SMS in, but you could not send out from a channel, right. which is why they present it as an app that gets added into the wrapper as a, you know, separate of just the regular Teams chat function. Um, but I think next year, I mean, the plumbing is definitely there. If you haven't gone and looked recently, the plumbing is definitely there for Microsoft to activate SMS on their calling plans. So if your idea is to use the native Microsoft calling plans, they may just do it on their own. Uh, but of course, the challenge, and when we get to the business side of this, is it gets really costly to have a calling plan on every single user. Like, it, like small accounts, it works fine. You start getting into 50, 100, 200, 300, 400. You, you, gotta, you gotta be very unhappy with your bill if everybody's on a calling plan from Microsoft, I think. So... There's, there's all of that. I think we caught up. So let's yeah, that's, I think that's everything. I'm just trying to make sure we don't miss anybody's question because we only got an hour and I know they come in. All right. So uh, we talked about direct routing examples. Let me go back to my little Microsoft page. Oh, I didn't catch my multi-factor fast enough. So let me go back just to show everybody the UI side. And yes, you know, Travis's follow-up question, by the way, is do yeah. you know of a carrier or someone you recommend for the SMS wrapper integration you're talking about? Yeah, I can send you some, I can send you some recommendations. Um, I'll do that offline because I'm trying to keep it kind of vanilla for you. So real quick, um, we talked about what the scripting can do, right? So this is the UI version of adding an SBC, right? Where you can go in and decide TLS, the SIP signaling, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So some basic settings, right? Port numbers, location-based routing. I saw somebody put in the, uh, in the chat recently, you could turn that on. Then you have your voice routing policies, right? This is like number formatting, right? US dialing versus UK dialing versus local dialing, whatever. Um, that's kind of sort of what's happening here at the UI level. And they're actually trying to containerize those for reporting purposes. And then you have your calling policies, right? Do I wanna allow this? Is it a global policy across the board? Yeah, these are all settings that get checked. And then lastly is the, um, we talked about emergency policies, right? For, for 
you know, for 911, stuff like that. This is where you can go in and edit your policy there. There's certain things that aren't available in the UI. I'm just showing you this so that you can visualize what the script, basic script is going in and doing for you. There's certain checkboxes you actually have to do from PowerShell, okay? But in the, in the, in ultimately speaking, you can go in and see all of those populated records here and it's all pretty straightforward. The other thing, uh, if you follow it one by one, the other thing that's worth mentioning is we talked about phone numbers assigned to users, right? So again, you can have full phone numbers here, extension numbers here, or short codes here. It really all depends on your strategy, but that's where you'll be able to see what's assigned, what's turned on, and what policies applied at the user level, right? So, um, and you can go in and start to play with some of that stuff. Uh, but ultimately, there are group group wide policies, individual policies. You see, my voice routing policy I applied here is just for you know the integration to the phone system on the back end. But it's all there as long as Microsoft's admin is actually exactly online. So so there's all of that. So common issues. Off the top of my head, I'll tell you what. Wrong licensing. Okay, wrong licensing, and we'll talk about licensing in a second. Propagation delay happens all the time. Why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? You know, you're, you're all over the place and then tomorrow it works. You just didn't wait long enough sometimes to let all of those changes propagate through. Three, um, you know, SBCs, right? There's approved SBCs that Microsoft has listed on their website. There's unapproved SBCs that just work, but Microsoft obviously won't support them. Um, it's important to understand that you know, just like anything else, right? You open up a ticket with Microsoft and they ask you the question, what are you using? If it's something that they don't support, they're not going to help you, right? So you got to make sure that you got good help if you're going to use something off the list, which it does. There's plenty out there that works, trust me. It's just, you know, you're not going to get help uh, pretty quickly if you, if you don't have that lined up ahead of time. Also, Microsoft, and let me actually pull this up so that you have a list here. Microsoft Teams Voice PSTN Regions. Okay, so that's not what I wanted. I actually should have just put Teams Voice Direct Routing. I'm not spelling properly today, but I'll let Google solve it for me. So there is multiple PSTN gateways within Microsoft's network, I'll find it. Yeah, I should have prepped this beforehand, but basically they're region specific and there's multiple per region, right? There's multiple in the US, there's multiple in Europe, there's multiple in Japan, there's multiple in Australia, there's multiple in Canada. I've seen it way too many times where people route their traffic to the wrong PSTN gateway. It'll ultimately get where it's trying to go. Microsoft will get it there. But if you're going really far outside of where you're supposed to, your audio quality is going to be horrible. So pay attention to your local region PSTN endpoints. And sometimes it's important to flip between them if you're having an issue, right? So common, common issues that pop up. So now we're gonna go into licensing, okay? So I saw this from another presentation, sorry. Um, so there is something called a Microsoft Common Area Phone License, which is really not meant for this. It works. Um, this is meant to be like, you know, there, there's a phone in the reception area or in the lunchroom or something like that. But that's no longer needed unless you want to use it in that purpose. The Microsoft phones, the Microsoft 365 phone system license. Vanilla, it's actually, that's the verbiage, Microsoft 365 phone system license. In the US, before any discounting distributor or whatever, it's um, $8 per user in the US. Obviously, if you get some sort of discount, your discount would apply. This SKU is available in every region, okay? That's the license you need for direct routing. So your starting entry point is whatever your cost for that license is, plus whatever else you got to plug in to do what you're trying to do. Now, here in the US, it's just go down to this. Under 300 users, $20 per user per month for Teams calling plans per user. 
300 or above, it's $57 per user, which is ridiculous, to be honest. The Yeah, the price jump, which is why direct routing is so popular. But ultimately speaking, um, if you do this, right, you add your Microsoft phone system uh, license, which is included in basic standard E1, E3, okay, it applies to all of those. You can pick and choose which users you want to activate and which you don't. It doesn't have to be carte blanche across the entire org, especially if you're doing hybrid uh, deployment. You could actually have extensions on the back end, phone systems, and Teams voice users, you know, within 365, and they can still communicate even though not all of your users are on the Teams voice side. So that's very possible in a hybrid routing scenario. So you could literally pick and choose which users you turn on, which users you turned off. E5, it's built in. You don't have to pay anything extra. I'm sure not every, like, I don't know how many people actually use E5 on a regular basis. I'm sure you got to be pretty big in order to justify it. But in E5, you don't need the $8 SKU or whatever the price is in your region. Everywhere else, you do the $8 SKU. See, we have a question or a chat. Uh, yeah, but that E5 is essentially everything, just not voice. Right. They let you turn voice on, <laughs> um, but they don't charge you for the additional license to do it. But there's not actually a calling plan attached to E5. But next year, you will have audio conferencing built in for a price that you're gonna have to pay anyway. So again, can't stress enough, Microsoft 365 phone system license. It's there, right? Like, let me just for giggles if Microsoft's working, right? If I go to uh, purchase services, right? Just the regular 365, it loads. App Store, you could literally buy it right off the 365 store outside of distribution, but this is going to take too long and it's loading and let's not waste any more time. All right. So the business case, swearing on a tag team. He's been waiting patiently. I'm going to actually bring my friend, Mr. Justin Dews from TechVera into the conversation. How are you doing today, Justin? I'm oh, doing well, George. How are you, sir? You know, still summertime, still trying to get that good weather in before it's too late. Please but, go ahead and um, change that uh, web page you have up there, buddy, where you burn my one? Cowboy jersey again. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let's, we'll, we'll talk about that offline. But yeah, the NFC East is in trouble. So, <laughs> so Justin's company, TechVera, is based out of Dallas, Texas. And they had really great success, especially during the pandemic times. I, I hope we're getting close to being out of that wet, that world and I almost want to erase that word from the dictionary if we can. But during the beginning of that time, um, TechVara doubled down on their marketing and they spent a lot of time doing really cool educational-based marketing around teams. So I'm not going to take the spotlight. Justin, tell us about the strategy TechVara took to use teams to get more buy-in from your existing customers, but also attract new customers. Yeah, absolutely, George. So, you know, one of the things that we decided as a company, as an organization to do um, when everything started happening last in April of April of 2020, May, and as things progressed through the summer of last year, um, you know, with everybody kind of having their own um, challenges they were going through, whether it be personal or professional or whatever, uh, we, we decided that wasn't going to be a time to just sell and fear monger and everything. Um, we wanted to educate. Um, this was a you know, this was a, a, a new era, if you will, for a lot of modern workers. Um, they weren't used to working from home, but now they're forced to go work from home. And so uh, Microsoft, and most people that had Office 365 had access to Teams, whether they knew it or not. You know, many of them didn't know they even had it. And so we decided, well, you know, that's one way that we can help um, some of these businesses perform uh, in these, you know, uh, new times, if you will, uh, that we had not experienced before. So we just did, we started doing webinars, two or three a month, um, where we would do Teams 101, 201, 301, you know, basic, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you set it up? Where do I find it? Where do I go? Um, just to get people to start asking questions about it. And what it did was um, it not only drummed up interest from our own client base, uh, but we were doing webinars where we were getting, uh, we'd have, 130 people on a webinar, you know, which is sometimes unheard of for an MSP just doing their own webinar on Teams, but it was so new, nobody, nobody understood it. So there was a lot of um, interest and intrigue around it. So 
yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the strategy that we took and uh, it helped us land some new, some new accounts and helped us uh, buy, um, sell into some existing accounts. And then, uh, you know, when you came along and said, hey guys, by the way, look what you can do with our solution and teams, you know, we started to marry the two together and, and that kind of helped because the question came up from our clients. Okay, cool. Well, you got me in here talking to everybody. I've got my files in here. I've got my HubSpot integration. I've got my Salesforce integration. I'm, I'm living, living in Teams and Outlook, kind of sort of both, you know? Um, so the next, the next evolution of this is I see that there's a little phone icon over here. Uh, what happens if I push that button? And that, again, there's another conversation that we started to have. Okay, well, cool. So you already have our phone system. Let us show what you can do. We can tie the two together. Now you don't have to leave your Teams to answer phone calls. Um, on your mobile device, you don't have to flip over to another app to make a phone call. If you're working within Teams, you can go ahead and place those calls. So, um, yeah, just one thing kind of led to another. And, and uh, we had a lot of Teams conversations in 2020 and in, in the 20, 2021, we're still having them. That's awesome. So, and I, you guys have actually had prospective prospects come in to the front door, like enterprise guys, three, four, 500 person companies coming in the front door and that was their ask right from mm -hmm. from the actual entry point that then turned into actually larger conversations right right no absolutely so you know um because it, it, if you're trying microsoft's trying to force people to use their own calling plans and and, and we know that the phone system is not near as advanced as something like a uh an asterisk or a 3CX or whatever, you know, PBX has been around quite a while. Um, you know, you can't do, it's, it's hard to set up auto attendance. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that a, that a, a typical digital PBX would have. Um, so they're saying, hey, how do we marry the two? How can we get the two working together? And it wasn't until, you know, early to mid last year that we started to see these integrations come out, right? And so um, having, having a solution that we could start talking to them about really opened up the conversation to some larger deals for us. That's fantastic, man. So when you, when you go in and pitch a prospective new customer, are you including the voice component as part of the overall package or is it like something you add on separately? How do you approach that? Uh, as much as possible, uh, when we go into a new prospect, regardless of size of, of client, one of the things we always do is ask for a copy of the phone bill um, just to see, is there a possibility that one, they're out of contract or two out of contract here soon um, where we can just bundle in the, the, the voice services um, in our MSP or flat rate pricing, however you want to call it, right? In our agreement. Um, because it's so easy to do. It, it, it's, and when you offer it as part of the bundle, whether you're whether you're you're pricing per user or per endpoint or however you price, you can bundle in voice services, right? Um, and it does a it does one of a few things. It, it, it increases stickiness there, right? Because now you've kind of you've gone full circle. You've got all the services. Um, it makes it easier for you as the MSP to manage everything because now I'm not having to call a third party vendor to troubleshoot a Mitel or a Nextiva or an Abay or what, or have 14 different phone systems that I'm trying to troubleshoot. Um, yeah, so it, yeah. So to go back to your original question, we try and bundle it in as much as possible. And in addition, we also try to bundle in the Teams integration with the phone platform um, that, we're, that we're selling. So. 100%. Yeah. So one thing that's worth mentioning before we, we get to the end of this is, Regardless of region, I can tell you why in the United States, but regardless of region, you probably have, if you've looked at it either through distribution or even through just 365's online store through the admin, you do not get discounted as a partner on the team's calling plans. So how do you make money? Just, I mean, you could turn it on, but there's really not any discounting or money to be made, even just a little bit like you do on your regular 365 licenses. So that's an important part to know. In the US, the reason they do that, which is not necessarily the reason everywhere else, is because of the telco taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're reselling voice and PSTN and dial tone, 
all the federal, county, local, regional, municipal tax bodies look at you as the biller of dial tone. And as a result, they treat you like the carrier, right? Even though you're not, there's no equipment, you're not running a data center or whatever. It's just, they follow the math, right? They follow the, the money. So that's why they don't do it in the US. That's not necessarily the reason elsewhere. I think they've just adopted the idea that they're not going to discount it for any region, but they're just not discounting the calling plan. So there's a benefit for you to actually get something out of it from a profitability standpoint outside of the normal calling plans for Microsoft than, than with, right? So that's worth mentioning um, right off the bat. Um, <clears throat> or what is, the uh, So has Microsoft raised their prices because of all that yet, George, on the calling plans? No, but what they will soon, start, right? But what they will start doing here in North America is they're going to start adding telco taxes on top of the calling plan. So right now, the twenty dollars or fifty-seven dollars, depending on if you're below or above three hundred users, isn't tax inclusive, right? They've just kind of threw it in and said we'll take care of it because their billing rating engine wasn't fancy enough to handle it. So they're just paying whatever it is on their own on the back end. But now that they're going to actually flip that switch soon, right? They actually finally put the solution in to do all the tax rating because it's been happening for a long time. I guess they just didn't think about that when they turned it on. Um, now they're going to do plus tax, right? Like everyone else. Oh, it's X per user plus tax. That's coming. Actually, it was supposed to have already been here. I think they delayed it a little bit but it's coming. So if you're a US facing Teams user, Teams voice calling plan user, not only will your 365 licensing go up in 2022, but you will start be adding, you will have to start paying taxes or you will be billed for taxes on top of the $20 calling plan, which will surely raise your invoice. Um, Kyle says, telco taxes are stupid. Um, listen, man, no argument at all, but it's there and I've never seen the government take a tax away. So I don't think it's going away. It's only going to get worse. Sucks, but that's what it is. So I, if it went away, I think we'd all be really happy because like the last page of every phone bill I've ever seen is just ridiculous. So uh, somebody asked the question, will there be a fun party at IT Nation? Uh, yeah, it's planned. Um, not pushing out anybody's conferences, but if you happen to be going to DattoCon, if it does happen, uh, if you happen to be going to IT Nation Connect in Orlando, and I'm sorry for all the guys that may be watching this internationally, if you can't get out of your country, I apologize. But <clears throat> if you end up going to either one of those, the crazy party that you're, you're talking about is planned on both. So we're hoping that they both go down uh, and that you know there's not some sort of restriction or lockdown that prevents, uh, I think probably Seattle is more likely if it were versus Orlando, but I'm hoping for both. Um, great time and nothing, you know, I love Zoom, I love Teams, but nothing beats in person. I think everybody would agree. You have to add a virtual component just in case. We could we could totally stream it live, right? There you go. So, but then we'll have to have like the, the cut, the, the power cut button just in case. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, both DattoCon and IT Nation are going to have virtual sides to the event of some kind, probably. Oh, but the, not so. not for not for the nighttime activities there. Uh, <laughs> you just got to make sure you set it up. You know, use some of that platform you have. Yeah, hundred percent. What about OnlyFans there, George? There you go. Uh, well, I mean, as long as it qualifies under the new policy, yeah. <laughs> Raise money uh, for the uh, Microsoft price cutting up. <laughs> Yeah, so the question just came in. Oh, it's not. They're super complicated with rules. I believe Idaho calling plans under twenty dollars a month have airtime untaxed, but not over. But over are taxed, are not taxed. And then the states have e nine one one surcharges. The rule engine surrounding telco. Oh, yeah. There's an entire industry on taxation rating. It's like, like they've built not just the taxating uh, like a shore tax, which was acquired by Avalara. You know, like that type of software, but then there's the compliance people behind them. And then there's the actual remittance transaction filing people behind them. And then when you stitch all of that together, it's, it's a whole separate sub industry yeah. just to deal with it. So that's why we usually tell people it, you know, if, if voice isn't your, then you get audited and your blood. <laughs> I, I, 
I can tell that story, by the way. I'll tell it really quickly, right? It doesn't take a lot to get audited, right? Like all it takes is one customer to complain to the right, you know, bureaucrat office and the, the dominoes do fall and they will take their money. And there is with penalties and interest and fees. So if you pissed off a customer and you weren't doing it right and you were just including dial tone on your MSP master invoice, uh, let me tell you, they don't care whether you lost money on it. You could be negative. Um, if they can stick you with it, they're going to stick you with it, which is why Microsoft in their master terms of service and their partner agreement say, hey, there may be taxation involved. Uh, please figure this out on your own. Don't ask us and we won't tell. Kind of indemnify themselves, which um, no shocker there. But uh, yeah, it's not fun. And unfortunately, some people have really gotten jammed on that. Uh, and they just didn't even know. But unfortunately, ignorance is not a defense. So uh, according to the law, so at least here in the United States. So bottom line is understand the rules, understand that they don't care about software. They don't care about subscription services. They don't like all of that's just if you sold them a pencil, they're going to charge you the same tax for that as an E1, right? They don't care. It's the dial tone part in the U.S. that's really, really complicated. And, you know, like I said, there's services out there that'll do that for you. But if it's not your bread and your butter, don't go down that road. There's, you know, how, you know, you can set it up so that you're making money, but not billing for dial tone. And, you know, I think that's the safest bet for most people, to be honest. So what do you think there, Mendy? That was a good 58 minutes. It was a good 58 minutes. Yeah. And, and there's a lot there behind for not, not for now, but me personally, like we are, we are voice uh, host and telecom as a voice provider for cloud PBX systems. Um, and we've actually gone through the path of like the tax nightmare you're talking about and, and setting it up and registering with FCC and all sorts of craziness. Um, and there's a lot of murkiness there. I would love to have like a whole discussion just around that to try to like clear oh, that up. Oh, dude, that's a session all to its own. But yeah, I, I, I will, I will raise my hand and say, yeah, before B VoIP was created out of an MSP here in Philadelphia, yeah, I was one of those guys that that did get the the certified letter in the mail saying, "Who are you and why aren't you paying taxes?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Bandwidth.com pays you taxes. Look at all these pages of bills." And right. they're like, "Yeah, we don't we don't care about them. We care about you." And that was a very long and hard conversation, which ended up with a very, very, very big check with commas and zeros. So they don't care. You can negotiate a payment plan if that you know can help you, but they're going to get their money. Is in the end. result that as long as you're reselling the dial tone, you have to pay taxes? They basically say it's your responsibility, like sales taxes or VAT, GST, like in outside of the country, it's your responsibility to exempt yourself and then collect and file just because you paid an upstream carrier for taxes and fees. That's what the tax and fees are as they are billing you as the end user, not your downstream customer. That's the catch. So yeah, that's, that's where things get a little bit problematic. Got it. Well, thank you both Justin and George. It's been a uh, informative cast. Um, even despite Microsoft, you know, trying to kick hey, you in the hey, pants with that. We made it through. We made it through. Yeah, it started going pretty snappy once it started responding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to thank you both for being on the August Vendor Spotlight Geekast and hope you guys stay involved in the community and be, uh, everyone who's watching should stay tuned for the September Vendor Spotlight. It's coming out next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have you. Thank you. Bye-bye.